Join me in the call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd. Our shepherd knows us and calls us by name. He leads us to that which makes for abundant life. In peace we rest secure. Please stand for the opening song. Be seated. Our scripture is from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. In Joppa, there was a follower named Tabitha. Her Greek name was Dorcas, which means dear. She was always doing much to the poor, but she got sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Joppa wasn't far from Lydda. And there, excuse me, and the followers heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to say to him, please come with us as quickly as you can. Right away, Peter went with them. The men took Peter upstairs into the room. Many widows were there crying. They showed him the coats and clothes that Dorcas made while she was still alive. After Peter had sent everyone out of the room, he knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to the body of Dorcas and said, Tabitha, get up. The woman opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Peter called in the widows and the other followers and showed them that Dorcas had been raised from death. Everyone in Joppa heard what had happened, and many of them put their faith in the Lord. Peter stayed on for a while in Joppa, 
in the house of a man named Simon, who made leather. I'm going to invite the children to come forward at this time, and in case you don't know her, introduce uh, Pastor Barbara Page Kell, who was born in this community. Baptized here, married here. So far, I'm still walking, so I'm okay. (laughs) But children, you need to be very careful around this instrument called a dulcimer, that you don't bump it because it's very fragile, and Barbara will explain it to you in a minute. So come on up. Okay. Yeah. Now I, let's see, I was really little and got baptized here. Anybody here three years old? Are you three? You're going to be three. Not three yet. You will be three on the 24th. Anybody else here? Three or four? Yeah? My mother taught Sunday school to the three and four year olds when I was little. And these were some of the books that she used because she liked music. Well, I grew up and went out of a class to another class. And in second grade, I started taking piano. And my mom always wanted to have new songs and new things and always was trying to do new stuff. Well, I kept playing piano. And in high school, I was the organist here in this church. And I've got to be really, really good at stuff. Now, Corey Groves was going to help me this morning, but he is sick. Because I was going to say, he and I were in college together, and we got really good at instruments. But I always learned from my mom that you always try new things. So this is a hammered dulcimer. Do you think you can help me this morning? I am just learning, which means I can make mistakes. But I think if everybody out there can help us, we can sing Jesus Loves Me. Because what we need to do is learn how to keep growing with our faith and our life. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll come back up here after church, and if we're very, very careful, you can take the, I will be here so you can try the dulcimer and just see how it works. But not this time, because we can't take up too much time in the service. So, let's see what we can do. Okay, let's go together. 
I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession that's uh, printed in your bulletin and also on the screen. We hear the reassuring words of the 23rd Psalm, O Lord, but are slow to believe them. We think we do not need your guidance to have abundant life. So as we worship this day, we need to be reminded that we are not alone, for you continually watch over us. We need to be reminded again of the mystery of your grace and joy. Quicken our hearts and minds that we might respond to your invitation to peace and abundance. Remind us again that you are the Good Shepherd. Hear the good news this day that God and our Lord Jesus Christ are the good shepherds. God is at the center of our lives and is with us always. Amen.
big thank you to Deb Michaels, who uh, became the choir director at uh, the last moment this morning. Corey is uh, very ill. I understand he even went to the hospital to uh, have some IVs. He has uh, Montezuma's revenge with a vengeance. And so thank you, Deb. Um, also wanted to acknowledge that your husband, David, is also a pastor. Everybody will flock around you and say, welcome back. But where are you, David? All right. David Kell is also a pastor, and so have a, have a time to greet him as well this morning. We're going to look at the very familiar 23rd Psalm this morning. I'm going to read it from two different biblical translations. Uh, first of all, the one that you're most likely most familiar with, and uh, this is from the New Revised Standard Version. Um, the other one is from the version called The Message, which is written by Eugene Peterson. First of all, from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. We become so familiar with this, we almost say it automatically and don't stop to think too much about what's actually being said. So I share from uh, the message the same scripture, but written a little differently. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk by my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. If you were here last week, you heard uh, the scripture from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, where Peter and Jesus are having a dialogue, and Jesus says to Peter, feed my sheep. I don't know it's a coincidence that uh, the people that do the lectionary then put the 23rd Psalm into the next set of lectionary scriptures for the next week, but uh, it's there. And it's talking about God being the shepherd. The story is told by a pastor of First Presbyterian Church in New York City, Mark Hostetter, about a children's sermon. Not quite like the one you did this morning, Barb, but the pastor call, calling all of the little children up and talking about the 23rd Psalm and reminding the children of how dumb sheep are and how they need guidance, and how they need a shepherd. And then stretched out his arms and kind of rolled his eyes up and said, now who do you think can shepherd us? Meaning, of course, himself. And there was just silence. The kids didn't know what to say until one of them said, well, Jesus is the shepherd. Well, that wasn't exactly what the young pastor had in mind. So he says, well, what about me? And then one of the kids said, well, you must be a sheepdog. (laughs) 
I've never known an honest-to-goodness sheepdog. But I've known cow dogs on my grandparents' farm that then became my uh, aunt and uncle's farm. Uh, they always had uh, some mix of collie dog that became a cow dog. And the cows would go back into the woods about half a mile from the farmhouse. And these well-trained dogs, you could just say, well, it was always Trixie or Lassie or Flossie, go get the cows. And the dog would tear down the lane, round up the cows, and bring them back. The dog was especially good if uh, one cow became lost and grandpa and grandma or aunt and uncle had to go back and find the lost cow. The dog was pretty good at finding it and uh, convincing it with a few uh, well-placed barks and nips that it really ought to come back to the barn because the meal was there and it was good to be there. So that's what I know about sheep dogs, which have to be a lot like farm dogs or cow dogs. Have you ever thought of yourself as a sheep dog? You have, haven't you, David? Seriously, have you ever thought about yourself as a sheep dog? Some days we're like sheep. Scripture says all we like sheep have gone astray. Some days we feel like we've gone astray, don't we? Some days we probably feel like the shepherd, taking care of others, rounding up the sheep, being caregivers. Some days we probably feel like the sheep dog, the sheep dog looking for the lost and the unfortunate and the downtrodden and the people that especially need our help. This particular psalm says, God is our shepherd. And it images into the New Testament where it says Jesus is the good shepherd. But it says God is our shepherd. I looked up what the duties of a shepherd would be, and here's some of the things that are listed. Feeding the sheep, watering the sheep, Grooming and shearing the sheep, delivering baby lambs, leading the sheep, retrieving the lost sheep, and in general, protecting the herd. The duties of a shepherd, especially in old times. This particular psalm says that God, like the shepherd is at the center of everything. If you read your Bible, you'll find out that the great leaders of Israel were shepherds. You start with Abraham, you move to Moses, they were shepherds. David was a shepherd before he became king. And so the image of a shepherd was very positive in Old Testament times. By the time it got to Jesus' time, the shepherds were kind of the lowest of the low, but still a very good image. The Lord is my shepherd. I think this psalm very simply asks us always to remember that God should be at the center of our lives. At the middle. If you go through that psalm piece by piece, it just talks about everyday things of life and said that God is always with us. God at the center. It places the Good Shepherd as a caregiver, setting a table before us, even in the middle of our enemies. God is with us. God is always there. So my question to each one of us this morning is, um, what are you this morning? Are you a sheep? Been a little astray and needs some guidance and needs some help? Are you a sheep dog? Are you a person that needs to remind us to care for the lost and the lonely the downtrodden, advocating for justice. 
Are you a shepherd? Giving care to others. Looking out for others. Being hospitable. And who knows, we might be all three in one day. But it helps just to understand who we are and that we fit right into this psalm. There's a phrase I read this last week that kind of keeps going through my mind. It simply says, the tyranny of the urgent. The tyranny of the urgent. Kathy and I uh, drove to Appleton this last week to attend a funeral on Wednesday. And uh, it's a little bit of a drive over there, and so you have uh, plenty of opportunity to observe how other people are driving. Uh, there, there are no police here this morning, are there? <laughs> Once in a while I go a mile or two over the speed limit. You know, if it's 55, I might go 60. If it's um, 65, I might go 68. So I was speeding, right? You know how many cars I passed at that speed? It's dangerous to drive at that speed. Cars come up behind you and you can't even see their front bumper and you're doing 60 miles an hour. Everybody's in a hurry. We have to be there now. The tyranny of the urgent. I'm assuming almost everyone here this morning owns a cell phone. When somebody texts you, you have to answer it immediately, don't you? Or if it rings, you have to make sure you answer it immediately. Sometimes we get so caught up in the urgent, and today everything seems to be urgent, that we forget. God is at the center of our lives. We don't have to be across the state 10 minutes before the car next to us. We might not have to reply to that text message right away. There was some wisdom in ancient days of saying, take one day a week or its equivalent to at least kick back and look at yourself as a child of God, the tyranny of the urgent. God is at the center of our lives, is always with us, and always caring for us. That's the message of the 23rd Psalm. Whether we're sheep, whether we're sheepdog, whether we're a shepherd. We attended a funeral on uh, Wednesday. And since I had a first season turkey permit, I stopped by the old Bartell homestead on the way back and hunted turkey uh, Thursday and Friday morning. Thursday morning was pretty quiet. No gobbling, saw a couple hens, went back, ate some lunch, took a nap, decided I'd go somewhere else in the evening. And so I went to my deer blind, which is about 15, 20 feet up in the air, and put out a decoy and started calling for turkeys. A couple deer came out, and I had my camera with my telephoto lens, and I thought, well, no, I'm not calling deer. And I heard a couple tar turkeys talking in the background, but uh, nothing would come in. Then I looked down the woods a little ways, and uh, oh, that's a really dark deer put my lens up, looked at it. That's not a deer, that's a bear. <laughs> it was just casually milling around back there, and then I looked and there was a second bear. And then a third bear. And then a fourth bear. <laughs> it was a sow with three cubs. Probably the cubs were a year old. The problem was they kept walking toward me. Well, I thought this was great, so I started taking pictures. <laughs> they were over 100 yards away, so I wasn't too worried. And pretty soon they were 50 yards away. And pretty soon they were 30 yards away. 
and pretty soon they were 15 yards away. <laughs> now, I was up high, and they didn't know I was there, but it was about 45 minutes before dark. They didn't seem at all anxious about going anywhere, so I thought, this is not a good situation. I'm really getting some great pictures, but I'm not sure I want to walk out with a sow and three cubs and be right in between them. This is not a good thing. So finally decided, well, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say something and I'm going to clap my hands, which I did. And the three cubs immediately ran in the woods and the sow just kind of looked around and slowly walked into the woods. Well, I climbed down and very nervously walked back to the car. Never saw them again. <laughs> and stopped to think, you know, life's kind of like that. Uh, someday they're a bear in our lives. And for me, that was a good thing for much of the time. Got great pictures. Yeah, it was good to be there. But it also was a little apprehensive sort of thing. I really didn't know how this was going to turn out and was just a little nervous about it. Isn't life like that all the time? There are so many things that come by us. We really need just to slow down and remind ourselves that God... God, through Jesus Christ, is at the center of our lives and with us always, whether there are no bear or forbear. The 23rd Psalm is a good one to reread today and remind us that God is with us always. Amen. As we come to another time of prayer in our service of worship this morning, I would remind you that there are prayer cards in the pew racks in front of you. If you have any prayer concerns that you would like to pass on to the church office, there are groups and people that are praying and would be happy to receive that request 
and pray for the request. I lift up a couple of people in prayer this morning and then would ask you if you have any prayers. Uh, First of all, Phyllis Fry asks for prayers for her husband Buford. Uh, He had two minor strokes this past week and he's in the rehab section of Gunderson Lutheran Hospital. And so our prayers are with them as he recovers from his strokes. Also prayers for Anita Worm. Um, Anita Worm is in the Sterling House, but is having some difficulty breathing. Her lungs have been filling with fluid, and so um, our prayers are with her at this time in her life. Do you have uh, prayers that you'd lift up this morning? Your Aunt Anna Marie just passed away, and you're, you're heading to a funeral today. Yes? Oh, an in, in aunt with cancer? Yes, my sister. All right, your sister has cancer, and our prayers are, are certainly with her. Check. Prayers for our military men and women around the world that are serving in many different capacities. Phyllis had heart surgery, was it this last week or the week before? A week ago Friday, and she's recovering at home right now? And prayers for a friend of yours is having heart surgery in Madison tomorrow. Yes. Your doctor's husband has been diagnosed with cancer, and you want us to pray for your doctor's husband. And so, thank you. Pat Strait is having some breathing issues, and so our prayers are with Pat. Prayers for your cousin who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, Thank you for your prayers uh, for our family uh, with my cousin's recent death. And um, also prayers for the people of Japan who have experienced several earthquakes recently. Yes, thank you um, for the support on the death of Kathy's cousin. And uh, prayers for the people of Japan. I'm sure we'll be hearing through United Methodist Committee on Relief soon on how we might be able to reach out. Please join me as we come together in prayer, first of all, in silent prayer. Oh, Nancy, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to ask you again. Prayers for Lynn Lofter's daughter who had just had surgery. Let us join together in prayer. As you have heard, O Lord, there are many concerns here this morning for people that are ill, for people that are recovering, for people that are struggling with illnesses. We ask that not only your healing presence be with them, but that you remind them that you are with them through all of life's circumstances. Here are prayers as we pray for others as
as we pray for ourselves, as we pray for our world. For we believe that prayer does make a difference, not only in the lives of people around us, but in centering ourselves to understand your call on our lives. Help each of us to understand how each and every one of us can be an answer to prayer as we work through your Spirit and reach out in the name of Christ our Lord. Be with us now as every day presents a new opportunity to learn and to grow as your followers. Be with us as we understand that we are a part of the 23rd Psalm. And just as people thousands of years ago affirmed your presence, we do so today. Remind us that you are always there and at the center of our lives. Guide us as we go forth to be your people, followers of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to say when we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are a grateful people, and one of the ways we can be grateful is through the morning offering. Uh, Will the ushers please come forward?
just as our God has been generous to us in so many things, we in return ask what we can give. And so we not only give thanks, but dedicate our lives as followers of Christ. Amen. I thank you for coming to worship this morning. If uh, I or anyone on the staff can answer any questions, um, we're available. If you would like to uh, contact the church during the week and uh, need any information or just plain need some time to touch base, uh, we'll be glad to visit with you. Uh, Thank you again for being part of this worship service. Some of us will go forth today as uh, sheep, needing some guidance. Some of us will go forth as shepherds, and some of us as sheep dogs. Wherever we are, remember that uh, God is at the center of our lives through Christ our Lord, and that God, through Christ, is always with us. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.